world of business. Now, the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, has hinted that it will begin slapping 5% tax on lottery winnings in the next five months. At a public lecture organized by the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana, the Deputy Commissioner of Tax Policy at the Ghana Revenue Authority said the 5% tax will de be deducted if a person wins more than 2,000 Ghana cities. The lecture was to educate accountants on a new tax act, 896, meant to streamlining domestic tax laws. The law also imposes 5% tax deductions on loans and gifts. The new tax act mandates the Ghana Revenue Authority to deduct 5% from lottery winnings of a certain threshold. If your winnings is in excess of 2,592 per annum, that is 216 per month. In essence of that, you pay tax at the rate of 5% on your lottery winnings. So those of you who have uh, uh, betting companies and other things, not only that, when you do even promotions, the law also empowers the Commissioner General to request banks to disclose information without seeking legal order. A tax partner with KPMG, Emmanuel Obing Esiedu, lamented businesses in the country are being overtaxed. Other speakers at the lecture charged the Ghana Revenue Authority to enforce already existing laws on taxes rather than introducing new ones. If you are raising, expanding the tax net through new taxes, who are those going to pay? Those in the informal or the formal, I believe they're going to be the same formal. So you should take a look at it. The higher tax rate is going to be paid by the same people who are already in the formal sector and paying, and not those who are in the informal sector. So what do we need? We need enforcement of the laws, not creation of new taxes and new rates. In other news, President John Dramani Mahama says African countries must begin adding value to their exports to enhance profitability of their products on the world market. He told a forum of chief executives in the Ivorian capital, Abidjan, that global market trends demand value addition to raw materials to ensure better returns. Here's a report by Edward Kwabi. The Africa CEO's Forum is the foremost platform for African international companies to share experiences and ideas, expand their networking systems and find new financial partners on the continent and beyond. The Forum is also a driving force in the development of the African private sector, learning from the best practices of fast-growing companies on the continent. More than 800 participants attended the 2016 edition hosted by Group Jeune Afrique in partnership with the African Development Bank and Rainbow Unlimited. President Mahama addressing the forum and underscored the importance of value addition. We also um, um, encouraging more companies to set up processing plants to process before before we export. Currently, we are processing about 30 percent of our total cocoa production. And we're looking by the year 2020 to increase that to 50% of um, our cocoa production so that we send it in more value added form than we have done. He emphasized adding value to raw materials for exports would reduce unemployment on the continent. We need to make that sustainable by putting in place these forms that restructure the character of our exports. One, in terms of adding value to those primary commodities before we export them. So in Ghana, one of the things we're doing is encouraging the private sector, for instance, to set up gold refineries because we've always exported gold in its raw form. And as I speak, two private companies have set up two gold refineries, you know, that um, are capable of refining a lot of the raw gold that we export. One, to create jobs in the economy, and two, it will add value to the gold that we send outside. Ivorian President Ahasali Ouattara said his country was opened to sharing ideas and experiences in trade to reduce over-dependence on developed economies. It is the first time the forum is being hosted by an African country since its inception in 2012. Now, an economist at the Institute for Fiscal Studies, Leslie Manson, says the Bank of Ghana's approach of fighting inflation should be sensitive to the source of the inflation. According to him, there should be flexibility instead of the straight jacket application of the monetary policy rate. 
The IFS economist Leslie Manson suggested if the inflation is imported resulting from exchange rate or commodity prices or from cost push drivers such as high cost of energy, then the policy rate should be directed to that. Be sensitive to the sources of the inflation and target the sources. The central bank strategy is one dimensional. It, it presupposes that the inflation is being driven by excessive demand. Okay, so the idea is to use the interest rate channel to restrain credit growth and, and demand from all of us. If the source is not from the demand side, then you do not use the demand tools to manage inflation. Unfortunately, that's not what they are doing. Leslie Mensa does not agree with the current approach in fighting inflation. The central tool in that strategy is the interest rate or the central bank's policy rate. But we know that the interest rate is also a cost element in, in firms' production and in the cost of living of, of even individuals. And so this strategy of raising the rate when the central bank foresees that inflation will move outside its target band in future actually hurts the economy because it raises the cost of borrowing for everyone. Since 2012, the central bank has either maintained or increased the policy rate. The costs in terms of output and job creation and, and firm distress because financing costs are, are elevated, those costs are being felt. They should rather target money in the economy rather than using the indirect channel of the, of the, of the interest rate, rather mop up the liquidity directly. Okay, we think that would have less detrimental effects. He argued the policy rate should serve a dual purpose of seeking price stability and full employment instead of only price stability. In a related development, the Chief Executive Officer of the Private Enterprise Foundation, PEF, Nana Osei-Bonsu, says the central bank maintaining the monetary policy rate at 26% will not influence uh, the productivity. He indicated that it will rather make business and industry uncompetitive, resulting from the high cost of credit. The manufacturing sector's growth had dipped to an unprecedented negative 8% as at the end of last year. The CEO of Private Enterprise Federation, Nana Osei-Bonsu, said the decision by the Bank of Ghana to maintain the policy rate at 26 percent will further worsen the already declining growth rate of business and industry in the country. He indicated the current policy rate does not provide an enabling environment for the manufacturing sector to grow. So if you're looking to influence the availability and demand from private sector for, the, for credit, then you have to influence that by reducing the cost of credit. And with the policy rate being maintained at, the tw at 26 or the old levels, the banks are also going to maintain their rates, which is extraordinarily uh, high for private sector. And so private sector will shy away from borrowing at that point when they're not certain of a market share and they cannot increase demand. He observed a high policy rate compounded by high utility charges and multiple taxation will collapse industry. Policy rate is the base platform on which everybody bases their, their, their rates. So the bank take the policy rate assess the risk premium of the potential borrower and then add that on top and add their cost of doing business. So you from 26, you're talking about the minimum of about 10 percentile or 100 percent, uh, you know, 100 basis points additional that they can add to it. It makes it what? 36 percent. And if your cost of doing business, only the cost of money is 36 percent, what about your personnel? What about the raw material base? You know, all the other activities that go to influence your production. So you talk about we are not going to be competitive. The inflation rate currently stands at 19%. All right, so that'll be it for business on New Day this Thursday morning. My name is Martin Isiedudati. Thank you very much for watching. Do have a fruitful business day.